turn to our worship service today. Today the Lord talks to us about the blessing of our faith and the blessing of our family. We begin with our first hymn. follow along in the hymnals this morning we begin on page 26 the service of the word and sacrament the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you and also with you god invites us to come into his presence and to worship him with humble and penitent hearts therefore let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us holy and merciful father I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And therefore, as a call servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all of your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and 
for those who offer here their worship and praise. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Almighty God, in your bountiful goodness, keep us safe from every evil of body and soul. Make us ready with cheerful hearts to do whatever pleases you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Testament lesson for this, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, is written in Genesis chapter 2. God instituting marriage for us, um, God creating man and woman together, um, and blessing it. We see here God's definition of what marriage is. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is, su who is a suitable partner for him. Out of the soil the Lord God had formed every wild animal and every bird of the sky, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called every living creature, that became its name. The man gave names to all the livestock, to the birds of the sky, and to every wild animal. But for Adam, no helper was found who was a suitable partner for him. The Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. As the man slept, the Lord God took a rib and closed up the flesh where it had been. And the Lord God built a woman from the rib he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. The man said, Now this one is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and will remain united with his wife and they will become one flesh. This is our Old Testament lesson. Our psalm today is Psalm 139b. And so we'll hear the refrain, we'll sing the refrain, and read the psalm responsibly. <laughs> Praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. Your eyes saw my unborn body. All the days 
ordained for me. How how precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How precious is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the things of sin. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This lesson this morning is written in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 2. Um, Jesus talks about our faith today, having the faith of a little child. We put our faith in him because he is the one that God sent to be our Savior. But we look to Jesus, the one who was made lower than the angels for a little while, so that by God's grace he might taste death for everyone. And now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. Certainly it was fitting for God the one for whom and through whom everything exists, in leading many sons to glory, to bring the author of their salvation to his goal through sufferings. For he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified all have one Father. For that reason, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. This is our epistle lesson. This time the choir will sing for us.
Christ for a gospel lesson? Holy Gospel today is written in the 20th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel. Jesus talks to here about blessing of family and our faith. Some Pharisees came to test him and asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He replied, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. But Jesus told them, He wrote this command for you, because of your hard hearts. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. In the house, his disciples asked him about this again. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. If she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Some people began bringing little children to Jesus so that he would touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I tell you, whoever will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the little children in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, we'll sing our next hymn.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Word of God that we look at today is our gospel lesson. Let me read a couple of those verses again. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. And at the end it says, And he took the little children in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of God. Let me see you. Your friends in Christ, your wives, does this sound familiar to you? Your husband has big plans for today. He's going to spend his afternoon and his evening watching football. After all, there's two games this afternoon and one this evening. And you say to him, honey, we're so busy during the week. The weekend is like the only time we have time to spend quality time together. And he says to you, great, come and watch football with me. But you think to yourself, watching football all day is not really quality time, plus he's going to get Cheetos all over the family room. Well, about 4 o'clock, you look at him asleep in the recliner with the TV on, with Cheetos all over his shirt, and you say to yourself, what a blessing he is to me. <laughs> Husbands, does this sound familiar? All you want to do is watch the Packer game, right? It's the Bengals. It should be a good game. It's your one day of the week that you get to kick back and watch some football. But your wife has all these projects for you that she would like you to do. And you say, honey, this is my one chance to relax. But along about the middle of the third quarter when the game is really getting good, she's standing in front of the TV with the list in her hand saying, honey, can you get to some of these now? And you think, what a blessing she is to me. Parents, what a blessing our kids are to us, right? When they're turning around and we're making noise and we're trying to watch a football game, or when they wake up in the middle of the night and they're sick and we don't get any sleep that night, or when the science project is due on Tuesday and they haven't started it yet, or when we tell them to be home at midnight and they're 45 minutes late, and we say, what a blessing these kids are to me. And kids, what a blessing your parents are to you. Right? And they keep on giving you more and more chores, and they won't let you be on your phone, and they insist that you get your homework done, and they just don't understand you, which is like all the time. What a blessing your parents are to you. Today the Lord Jesus talks to us about family, and what a blessing our family is to us. Something, even if it's hard for us to see, what those blessings are. He also talks to us about the blessing of our faith. Even if that's sometimes hard to see. And so today, our theme is, let us see how Jesus blesses us through our marriage, through our children, and through our faith. The Pharisees came to Jesus, and they asked him a question. Now, this wasn't a real question in that they weren't really looking for information or hearing about what he had to say. They were just trying to test him or to trick him. They were trying to get him to answer in a way that would discredit him before all of the mobs of people that were following him. And so, the question in our text, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Now there's a verse in Deuteronomy that the different rabbis would interpret differently. Some of them very strictly, that no, you should not divorce your wife. Others of them interpreted it rather loosely or rather liberally that if your wife did something that offended you, like burned the dinner, then you could just write on a piece of paper, I divorce you, and you could give it to her, and you would be divorced. And so that's verse 4 in our text. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. And so they were just so sure that they had the perfect question and they could trick Jesus, and whichever way he answered, he would be in trouble with the people. So how did Jesus answer this? Well, he went back to the Bible. Great idea, right? There's some good advice for us. If we ever have to look for an answer to a religious question, we go back to the Bible, go back to God's Word. And Jesus went way back to the beginning, which was our Old Testament lesson when God created Adam and Eve for each other and brought them together. We go way back to God's institution of marriage. And he quoted that verse from chapter, verse 24 of chapter 2. 
that says, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And so there's God's definition of marriage. Jesus quotes it here. The Apostle Paul quotes it when he's talking about marriage. God's definition is a union between a man and a woman. A union that they're committed to for the rest of their life. Notice he doesn't say a union of a man and a man or a union of a woman and a woman, but he says a union of a man and a woman committed together for the rest of their life. And when God sets marriage up this way, as a lifelong union between a husband and a wife, that's genius. Because through this plan, God blesses the couple and blesses marriage. So when we approach our marriage with the thought that, all right, this is it. This is the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Then we realize that this takes commitment. That this is going to take some work on our part. But the work and the effort is totally worth it. Because now we can see this person, Cheetos or not, as the person who is going to be a precious blessing to me through my life and is going to walk together with me through my whole life. And it gives an awesome sense of security and peace to our life because we know that this person that I'm traveling life with is always going to be there for me no matter what. Rich or poor, sickness, health. We promised each other we will be there forever for each other. This is the person I can count on. This is the person I can cherish. What a wonderful blessing then. And the way that God has set up marriage for us, what a wonderful blessing he gives us. So God created marriage for peace and stability in society. And as we go along in our text, Jesus, we see Jesus talking about children. And so very familiar words for us, Jesus blessing the little children. It says parents were bringing their children to Jesus so that he could bless them. And it says the disciples rebuked them. The disciples said, get out of here. Go away. They thought they were doing Jesus a favor. They thought they were doing him a favor because they thought Jesus was way too busy and way too important to be bothered with these little kids. And they thought they were doing Jesus a favor by screening his visitors. All right, you guys can come in because you have a serious disease. You guys stay out and you just have little children. Well, when Jesus saw what was going on, he was more than a little unhappy. It says he was indignant which means very angry. Why? Because Jesus loves little children. He was anxious to bless them, and so it ends up there with this precious picture of Jesus taking them up in his arms, and the, and the Greek verb there has the idea of one by one, taking them and putting his hands on them and blessing them. And so good for us to remember, if the Lord has blessed us with children, what a blessing children are to us. Sometimes a challenge. Parenting is not for wimps, right? It can be hard because kids can be noisy and make a mess. Even when they get older, they can still be noisy and make a mess. And they can challenge us and they can test us. But what a blessing they are to us. It's so important for us to remember the blessing that we have in the children that the Lord has given us. And what a blessing for kids to remember the parents said, God has given you to love you and lead you and, and direct you through life. This lesson also reminds us of how precious we all are to him. I'm reminded of a movie. It was called Jewel of the Nile. It's kind of an older movie. Maybe you saw it years ago. Uh, it featured Joan Wilder, who was a romance novelist. And in the movie Jewel of the Nile, she found out that the jewel was not a precious gem, but it was actually a person. And when she met this person, the Jewel of the Nile, they were in a, a dangerous situation, very tense. And the Jewel says to her, did you bring an army? And she says, no, I'm just Joan Wilder. And so for the rest of the movie, he calls her just Joan. Did you ever feel like that? Like you're just Joan, or just George, or just saying that you don't really matter that you 
you're kind of pathetic, or that you're kind of a loser, or that you're going through a hard time and no one's seeing you and no one's helping you because you don't seem to matter to anyone. We matter to Jesus, don't we? If Jesus could interrupt his busy day of preaching the word of God to thousands of people, if Jesus could interrupt his busy day of healing people with horrible diseases and take little children up in his arms and bless them, then we matter to him too, don't we? Jesus interrupts his busy day of ruling and controlling the world to listen to our prayer. Whatever it is, whenever it is. And just the fact that Jesus can listen to millions of prayers all at the same time just blows our mind. But this shows us how important we are to him. That Jesus could interrupt his time in heaven and come down here and give his life for us on the cross shows how much we matter to him. Jesus loves us and listens to us and cares about us and will always be there for us. So what a precious blessing he reminds us of here. So Jesus talks to us about marriage and children and doesn't mean we have to get married or that we will have children. But reminds us of the blessing there and then talks to us about our faith and, and what a blessing our faith is to us. And he talks about talks about receiving the kingdom of God like a child. He says, Amen, I tell you, whoever will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter them. Before that, he says, do not hinder them, because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. So what does this mean, to receive the kingdom of God like a little child? We pretty much understand that to mean that we accept the kingdom of God just like a child accepts things. You tell a child something and a child accepts that and believes that and trusts that. Now is that a good thing? If we've grown up now and we're adults, we think, well, maybe that isn't such a good thing because stuff that we believed when we were little kids, stuff that people told us, we now realize, mm, not so true. Kind of nonsense. And so we have developed discernment and wisdom and understanding and so we're not going to believe all that stuff. And yet Jesus says, receive the kingdom of God like a little child. Have childlike faith. Because these things are trustworthy and true. Even if they're things that just seem wild and crazy for us. Like a fish swallowed a man and that man survived in that fish for three days and then was spit out on the beach and lived to tell about it. Or that one man dying on the cross could pay for the sins of the whole world. Or that at the end of the world, Jesus is going to come again and bring our bodies out of the grave, no matter what condition they're in, and turn them into a glorious resurrection body. That stuff seems wild and crazy. How can we believe that? And yet Jesus has given us faith to believe it. For most of us, when we were babies. For most of us, he came to us through the word and the water and blessed us with the gift of faith. And then as we have grown and learned and developed discernment, he strengthens us in that faith so that we can continue to believe these things and continue to trust them with the, the faith of a little child. How can we do that? Little children just trust. And Jesus tells us not to think about it too much. Just trust me. A man put a stack of gold coins on his porch and he put a sign there on the porch that said, free, take one. All day, people walked past his house, they looked at that sign, they looked at the gold coins, but they didn't take any. Why? They thought to themselves, this has to be a trick, right? There's some hook here, he's going to try and sell us something, or they're not real gold, or if I take one, he's going to jump out of the house and say, what are you trying to do, to steal my money? And so nobody took one. And at the end of the day, a child walked by, he saw the sign, he read, he took a coin. Walked away. Why? Because he had the faith of a child. Jesus says, have that kind of faith. Even if there's wild and crazy things in the Bible. Jesus says, trust me, because these are reliable and true. That one man could die for the sins of the whole world. 
or that when we die, our soul goes to heaven and we get to be with Jesus forever. Or that at the end of the world, he's going to come and revive our bodies and give us glorious resurrection bodies. Or that no matter what happens to us, Jesus will make that work out for our good. How do we know that's trustworthy and we can believe in that? Because Jesus is trustworthy. He has never lied to us. He's never given us a promise that has not come true. He has never let one of his words fall to the ground unfulfilled. When Jesus says something, it's true and it happens. And the more we hear it, and the more we read it, the more we see that, that Jesus is trustworthy and true. The more we hear it and the more we read it, the more he strengthens us in our faith. The more we hear it and read it, the more we see what a blessing our faith is and all the promises he gives us. So, so much to be thankful for. Jesus blesses us with family and blesses us with our faith in his wonderful promises. Amen. I promise. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Now let's join in confessing our faith. We use the next in the We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you. Amen. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. May we thy bounties thus as stewards to receive, and gladly as thou blessest us, to thee our first fruits give. Amen. Let's rise for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we include a prayer on behalf of Emma, little Emma Mace, um, and she will be having a surgical procedure this week on her, on her kidney. We thank and praise you, Heavenly Father, for all the spiritual blessings and the human joys you continually shower upon us. For adopting us through Christ to be members of your heavenly family, we give you thanks. For permitting us to live in the companionship of our earthly family, we praise your holy name. You have established the family as the first and most important unit of our society. But we must confess that we have not always treasured the burden the members of our family as highly as we ought. As husband and wife, we have not always treated one another with the kindness and consideration that you would expect of those who claim Jesus as Savior. As parents, we have not always done our best to bring up our children in your nurture and in your admonition. As children, we have not always honored our parents. For these and all sins that we have committed, we ask your divine forgiveness and trust in our Savior Jesus for that forgiveness. Grant the gift of your Holy Spirit to each member of our family that we may live in the spirit of love and forgiveness. May your spirit also permeate the hearts of all who are members of your spiritual family, the church, 
again so that we may live in love and forgiveness. And dear Lord Jesus, tender shepherd and savior of little ones, you have shown special devotion to our children, commanding that they should be brought to you and saying, as such is the kingdom of God. Take your little precious lamb, Emma, into your arms. Cradle her in your bosom. Be the good shepherd and lead her safely through her surgery and bring her to recovery. We also pray that you would be with her parents and give them your peace. We also pray for our communicants. Dear Father in heaven, help us to remember your love and mercy in the Holy Supper that we are about to receive. As we receive the bread and wine, fill us with the joy of believing that we also receive Christ's true body and blood as the pledge of your forgiveness. As we depart in peace from this supper, strengthen our faith and refreshed in our spirits, help us henceforth to avoid sin in our lives. Rather, give us grace to serve you with total loving obedience as your true loving children. We ask it in our precious Savior's name, and in his name we join in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the service of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace.
to you. Welcome, especially if you're visiting us today. We're certainly glad to have you here. I'd like to highlight some things in the bulletin. But first of all, thank you to the choir for singing for us. We appreciate that. And to highlight some things, if you'd be interested in being on a sub list for Sunday school teachers, let me know and we can put you on that list. Pam and I will be out of town next weekend. I was asked to do our the, uh, wedding uh, affirmation of a civil service up north, so we'll be gone for the weekend. Past area pastors are in the, in the bulletin here, or I'll have my cell phone with me if that will I'll take care of it. And then Ladies Aid was moved to this week because I have a pastor's conference next week. Um, also, um, we are receiving a special offering for Martin Luther College. If you would like to participate in that, you can just put it in the offering plate market. Um, someone asked, um, should we make a check out, if you're writing a check, should we make it out to MLC or should we make it out to our church? So make it out to St. Paul's and then we'll take them all and send them up in one, one check. Let's see, Youth uh, Lutheran Women's Missionary Fall Rally is on Saturday in Princeton. Jamie and Tom Niefeld will be speaking about proclaimers, so um, anyone's welcome to go along for that. Some things not in the bulletin. Um, I, a few weeks ago we had an announcement about a crafters seminar, crafters day in Fond du Lac. The, the um, registration ended last week, but they didn't get a whole lot of people sign up, so they did extend the registration if you're interested in that. Um, it's on the bulletin board, the poster is still there. Also, um, there's a poster on the front door, WLA is presenting Bye Bye Birdie in the beginning of November, so you can take a look at that if you're interested. Also on the front door, and this was in the, in the bulletin last week, online giving is here, so you can check the poster, check the newsletter, or there's some of these in the rack um, by the bulletins also if you're interested in that. Also in the entryway, there's a bulletin board with our college students if you'd like to adopt a student. Um, feel free to, to take one of those and just sign your name on the sign up sheet. So. I think that's it. Both uh, birthdays or anniversaries? Yeah, all those. Yeah. Your niece? Your niece? Ashley. Ashley. Ashley's daughter. All right. Happy birthday to Ashley yeah. on Tuesday. Leanne? Maybe? <laughs> okay. Your blessing sitting next to you seems to be coming up here. Bexley? Raylan's birthday. Next week. Happy birthday, Raylan. How old are you going to be? Two. Two. All right. Happy birthday. Anyone else? Anniversaries. All right. Have a good week.